Hi, my name is Mark. But of course you are. This is going to be a little bit of a different video, not really because it's a type of video I don't usually make, but actually because some of you may think I'm stealing someone else's idea. And before you spam me in the comments and in the dislike section, let me explain this little situation. As you saw in the title, this video is going to be talking about maybe some of the reasons why you really don't sound that good on guitar. And some may think it's kind of a ripoff of Why You Suck At Guitar by Ben Eller. And trust me, I'm a big fan of Uncle Ben's channel and all of his content. And while I'm recording this video, I'm not really aiming to steal his content or anything. You should go subscribe to Uncle Ben's channel. I don't believe you. I'm just trying to make a video focusing on things that I noticed that my students do quite a lot even when they start to get proficient at their instruments. They start to learn how to play the guitar, then they learn a couple of solos, and as I mentioned in other videos, they start focusing on the wrong things. And I always tell them to go and watch Uncle Ben's How To Not Suck At Guitar series, and even though it's a great series and Ben is awesome, he hasn't been able to make videos on all of the topics that maybe make you suck at guitar, right? So I decided I would do a video not really focusing as much on topics that Ben has already talked about, but topics that not only I think are important for my students, but also important for you, maybe. Oh, really? I've probably been rambling for a while, so let me just show you. Before we dive straight into it, I just want to say that timestamps will be on the description below, and while you're down there, please consider subscribing and turning on all the notifications. YouTube's been acting a little bit weird lately. Even if you subscribe to a channel, you may really not be notified of that channel's content, and it may really not show up on your subscription box. <sighs> so everybody tells you to ring the little bell below, right? When you click the notification thingy below, you really gotta make sure you turn on all the notifications. Not just occasional notifications, you gotta turn on all the notifications. I can't take it anymore! I just wanna die! We all wanna die! And while you're down there, please consider leaving a like, and maybe checking some of my other videos after this one. That's too much! Man. Perhaps you'd like to check out some tips on how to make the audience and the people you're playing to think that you look and sound like a pro. Or maybe you'd like to check out learn this one riff and learn all of the picking techniques and perhaps get a girlfriend? And lastly but not leastly, how baby metal changed my songwriting. All of those videos will be on the description below, on the card section right there, and on the annotations of the end screen. Don't forget to check them out after this one, yes? Oh, well, what if I said, well, if you... Yeah. Okay, so now I guess we can get straight to the playing part. Are you sure about that? Here are some things that you can check out and practice so that you can improve your own guitar playing. Even if you can already play reasonably fast and you can play some crazy scales and arpeggios, if you're not doing these little things properly, those little things are the ones that really may break your playing a little bit. Like a somebody, fuck you, big. Some things you should consider are perhaps your pick. In this case, I'm using a Dragon Heart guitar picks. I'm using a hardened one. It's probably like two mil or something. But have you experimented with picks? Have you tried multiple sizes and multiple widths? Even though picks are just picks, and some picks are really renowned, like the Tortex one and the Jazz three shapes, maybe those are not the ones for you. Maybe those ones are not really the most suitable for you. So I suggest you try a bunch of picks. And if you want to try some of these, at the checkout, leave it in the observation box that you got the idea of buying a pick like this from me. So nobody cares. Another thing you may also want to consider is string gauges. For instance, right now, I'm using a set of 10 to 46 balance tension from the Dario, the NYXL ones. <laughs> And to my personal taste, these strings feel really good. Not only are they the right tension, but they also feel really good. Whether they're fresh out of the box, or they've been sitting in the guitar for a few weeks. Supposing you haven't just destroyed them with sweat. But even though I'm using 10s and most people use 10s and others play 9s, you should also experiment with string gauges. Perhaps your fingers are a little bit stronger, and you need a couple of string gauges that are a little bit thicker. Hell yeah! Or maybe you have small hands or you're just a beginner, and 10s may be a little bit of an overkill, so you should try 9s or... Maybe 8, who knows? It also depends on your guitar. This guitar is Itali, so it has a 25.5 inch scale length. Compared to a Les Paul, for instance, it has a scale length of 24.75 or something. The same gauge of strings will feel much more stiffer on this style of guitar than it will on a Les Paul style of guitar. Even though these first two ones aren't really playing things that you can say, oh yeah, I'm just maybe not holding the pick correctly or something, I can tell you this, it's more important for you to feel comfortable around the guitar you're playing than to force yourself to something you may not enjoy. As the master Guthrie Govan said, it's pretty much like writing. You can either have a good pencil and be able to write your papers properly, or you can try and write in one of those rubber pencils, right? Everything gets much wobbly and inconsistent, but 
I don't know, maybe you like that kind of thing. So if you haven't tried the rubber pencil or you haven't tried the right type of picks or the right type of strings, I highly suggest you do. Anybody care what this guy thinks? No! Getting to the more technical side of things, there's one thing I should point out. Sometimes students develop some weird techniques, and two things can happen. One, you either practice it a lot and own that technique. For instance, let's look at guys like Ole England and Misha Mansour, and to some extent Michelangelo Badio, and even Marty Friedman, who have these weird picking techniques. Ole picks like this. <laughs> while Misha Mansour kind of plays like this. And Martin Friedman plays like this. And Michelangelo Beto has these crazy techniques. And even though those are variations on how to play a picked note and how to play fast lines and all those things, I must warn you about this. There's a difference between having a different technique and having a complete no-go. If you want to be proficient at your instrument, you gotta have a good technique. For instance, something that has happened to me with female students is that they like to have long fingernails. And I'm usually like, well, how are you really going to press the strings onto the frets? you have nails that go over your fingertips. And they mostly say, well, I'll just try to do it like this, and they realize they can't. Instead of pressing the string with her fingertips, she was trying to do it with her nails. And playing like this sort of weird technique, like, that's just a no-go. No, God, please, no, no! If you want to be proficient at guitar, there's some techniques that work and others that don't. So you have two choices. You either learn the correct techniques, or if you want to have a slightly different approach, you should compare your approach to the regular approach, maybe talk to your teacher, because, let's be honest, bad technique can have some really bad side effects. And what makes a good technique is, as I mentioned before, how you hold your pick, Again, you can check out Ben Eller's video on that. I have a video on picking technique that you may also want to check out, that will be on the card section, probably. The way you rest your picking arm on the guitar, the way you play, for instance, some people like to play like this, with their arms close to their bodies, and in general, that's really not a good idea. And there can also be some bad techniques on your fingering hand. I see a lot of people, when they try to do bar chords, they do them like this. And even though this may sound good to you, if you look at my fingers, like this, can you see, my finger is really high on the string. The sixth string is the lowest one I have to play. So I better have my first finger right on that string. Not really like this, above it. Like this. But again, you can check out Ben Eller's video on that. It may be really helpful for you. But another thing you may want to consider is that you may be pressing too lightly. For instance, this is what your bar chord should sound like. If it sounds like... That means that either you're not putting enough strength on the strings, or maybe there's a problem on your technique. And the exact opposite thing can happen. If you have your bar chord, this is how your bar chord should sound like. If you push too hard, and that may be kind of funny for a chemetic effect, but that's really not what you're supposed to do. And that doesn't just show up on chords, it can show up on single note lines. Wait, what? If you play a G note on the 4th string, on the 5th fret, this is how your G note should sound like. Not... You're not pushing with enough force. But you can't really push with too much force, because this will happen. If you notice, I'm not really bending the string. I'm just pushing it down much harder. So yeah, you can be on the lookout for that one, because, because this is something that, even if you're quite proficient, let's say, at soloing or, or playing really fast and crazy arpeggios and scales, if somebody tells you to play a weird chord like, I don't know, like, I don't know, maybe something like this. And you're not used to play these kinds of chords, maybe your hand is not strong enough to play a chord like this. So your chord may sound kind of like... Or maybe you're trying to overcompensate, and instead of playing the chord like this, you'll get... Makes sense, right? That's crazy.
Lastly, but not leastly, sort of, it's again talking about your picking hand. Let's say that you need to play some kind of chord progression like... <laughs> Especially if you're playing with gain, for instance right now I'm not using like a gigantic amount of gain, but I have a slight crunch, right? And if you're playing in a rock band or a punk band or whatever it is, even though this is probably not enough gain for punk, if you're just strumming literally soft. You don't get as much gain out of your guitar. You can play, for instance, really hard on the downbeat and then softer on the other bits, like. And even when it comes to single note line stuff, if you're playing a solo, like. That solo had plenty of dynamics. Some notes were slid in, while others were bent, and some were picked really hard, while others were attacked more softly, and others were plucked. But if you're playing all of those notes like, Your solo will sound much more sterile. And that's something that I've seen with students that come from a more jazzier type of playing, is that they play most things really undynamically. I'm not saying jazz is not a dynamic genre, I'm just saying this is something that I've encountered quite oftenly. So if you're picking really delicately, don't be scared to hit the strings. <laughs> For instance, look at me, these strings are really old and can break at any point. But I'm not really worried on hitting the strings really hard and, and bend really far. But hey, take note of this one. Even though I'm telling you that you may want to pick a little bit harder, you don't want to pick everything really hard. If you're doing like, I don't know, a pull shuffle. If you pick really hard, your strings will go slightly sharp. really happen as much when you go up the neck. If you're playing over this really kind of melodic thingy or whatever, you can play a little bit softer. And then when you get a little bit more hyped up, or maybe the song changes to a more heavier part, you're gonna... You gotta have dynamic control and you really can't be afraid of hitting the strings. I know guys that have been playing for years and even playing in bands and when it's all about chords that maybe you want to play a little bit softer. But when the song starts to build up, they really can't add the dynamics. maybe the song is kind of a rock song, then it gets a little bit softer, you don't really need to change to a clean song or whatever, you can just change your dynamics. You can go from... You see, these little things can add a lot. Maybe you were watching this video and you were like, well, those things are fun and all, but I don't know, meh. I can tell you this, if you can play your modes really fast across all the strings, like... Or maybe you can sweep pick like crazy. The only thing I can tell you is, good job, but 
That's really not what it's all about. And if you don't believe me, look at guys like Phil X. He stated multiple times that, yeah, some guys can play a lot and some guys can shred a lot and some guys know all the chords and all the theory, but let's say that you only have to play one note, like a C note. I don't know about you, but that C note sounds a little bit bland to me. But let's say that you hit a note and you rake it first, maybe you add a little bit of vibrato, or maybe you pre-bend it, or maybe you bend it from a fret below. Those little things count. Your approach to one note is much more important than how fast you can sweep pick. That's personally how I think, and honestly, how many of the pros think. But who knows, maybe I'm just rambling. Oh, you're right. And when you're right, you're right. And you, you're always right. Thank you so very much for watching. If I was able to help you out in some way or another, please tell. And if you think there was something I missed, something I should have said, maybe you have suggestions for other videos, don't forget to leave it in the comment section below. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. No. As always, I'm giving away free one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons. <coughs> and anyone can enter, but they are limited though, so you gotta be fast. I can move really, really fast. And all you have to do to win one free Skype lesson and discounts on future lessons is to subscribe to my channel, turn on all the notifications, follow me on Instagram, like my Facebook page, and then DM me on one of the social media, with screenshots proving that you did everything mentioned before. How about new? And yeah, I guess that's it. Again, thank you so very much for watching, please consider subscribing and maybe checking some of my other videos out, and cheers! Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to Uncle Ben's channel, even though it's pretty difficult for you to be watching this video and not really be subscribed to him. You should go subscribe to Uncle Ben's channel.